all over him and stuff and and uh you know he actually saw like a man in his house and it was aggressive with him and he was i'm done that's it <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, but that... he was so curious like he, he'd come in and like he had to get all of his stuff out and you know he'd come in and he was doing a little bit of work on the house to you know try to up the value a little bit but like he wouldn't stay there at night that was one of those cases where they were like here's the keys lock up i'll see you later well you know what i find too i had a medium on here in the last couple of weeks ago i should say and she was saying a lot of Oh, the, what you call demons and stuff. As you mentioned, that's really popular right now, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, affect people like her, people who are down and out, uh, have mental issues or, you know, on drinking heavy or drugs, uh, that the demons kind of come in and can invade their body. And, uh, she said that she did some investigations, you know, at their house herself you know for some of these things because she's into doing somewhat of what what you do and she said that in one case she actually had the uh, evil spirit or whatever uh follow her back home and it, it she ended up having to you know use a priest to get rid of it because i guess it was actually you know um you know hurting her you know where she would get scratches and stuff like that so wow you know, that that type of thing, you know. So I, yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't, um, like our medium, oh, actually, of uh, our medium Emma, who's on hiatus right now, she has had things follow her home. Luckily, nothing was at, violent with her, or anything like that. It was more like, can you help me? Can you help me? Well, you know what I. I I fear for you sometimes because if you go into a, a place that is, you know, has you know, bad spirits or what have you, you go in there and they could, you know, uh, from what I've heard from talking to other mediums, they could follow you back to your, your place. And latch on to, I, I don't think it's happened to me. Like I was, there's, there was one piece where I was like, there was a, like, um, a few strange things that were happening in my house right after investigation that I was a little bit curious as to if there was something there and that had followed me back, but it had shortly after that, all of the things had stopped. And that was the only time that I think that I've ever been followed back. I mean, you know, we have certain things to keep you strong. You know, I mean, some of us are religious, some of us are not and are all of all different religions. And, um, so we have kind of these things that empower you and help you feel protected. And, you know, I, I feel like you have to be a pretty strong willed person to do this full time, you know, like as, as like a, one of your careers in life. Yeah. And if you, if you're vulnerable, I mean, it's, just, it is kind of, you're, you're given that percentage that you might just let something in. Yeah, that's that's what you know would would scare me is if you're out you know investigating like the old mental uh, institution you know the hospital, uh, you know you could have somebody you know that uh, is basically cleaning and wants to cling on to one of you guys and you know all of a sudden you, all of a sudden you're not having very good luck or something could happen you know to you guys so that's something I would be kind of a little bit nervous about. So another question I have uh, for you is what do you What's your, what would you, how, for some new group that's starting out, wisdom, what would you tell them? Be patient. Sometimes, I mean, you're, you're sitting in a, in a location for hours upon hours and it's going to be boring, but you know, don't, don't get discouraged by that because if you if you do you know what you're supposed to and you know you follow through with with your techniques and and you know you'll get something you'll find a place that has activity and you'll get it but just be patient i mean uh, the only other thing is do your research and make sure that you're getting them from credible sources that can also be backed up by other people's research because that's where you get these some crazy notions and ideas of things that are going on 
Well, I, I guess if you have somebody, maybe I hate to say that the term maybe is not stable. Uh, could be, you know, seeing ghosts and hearing ghosts and convinced they got ghosts going on in their house. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's quite a few of those people walking around. Uh, how do you screen against that? Actually, uh, we have a clinical psychologist on our team. and uh, well, that, that helps. That helps a lot. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. It does. And, and I mean, Seamus also works in, um, uh, he, he does like uh, campus safety. So he's always, um, you know, dealing with uh, people who are intoxicated or on different types of drugs or, or you know, fighting or in, in all sorts of states. But, um, I mean, our, our clinical psychologist, Laura, uh, she does a lot of our, after Seamus has done his initial phone screening, she will go and meet with the clients. And so she will be looking for, you know, anything that she finds you know, that's not adding up too much or certain behaviors that they're displaying that kind of project, well, maybe there's some substance abuse or maybe there's something else that they're not telling us because she'll notice that yeah. certain behaviors. You but know. She, yeah, she's, she's just a godsend. You know, if, if I lived uh, closer, of course, I, I we got a, a bridge here. It's called the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. It uh, goes over uh, between the peninsula. You know, it's a couple miles long. And there has been people committing suicide off of that bridge, you know, a couple a year. But you get like, was it the Bay Bridge, the San Francisco Bridge, and some of those ones where people are, you know, uh, committing suicide on a regular basis. I'm just wondering, you know, if, uh, if you know, if a person got there with, you know, some type of recording device, if they would, you know, I, I, I would think right there would be so much uh, turmoil from the person before they commit suicide that uh, maybe something would remain there. I do want to refer to something that you were saying here, Gary. Um, there's been a lot of lot a lot of recent deaths over here and over over here where we live in Gig Harbor, Washington. Um, uh, like car accidents and some weird stuff like that, like on bridges and like certain roads but the weird thing is it would happen on the same road like on the same bridge like same spots so like well, stuff like that well i'm just thinking you know kevin like people that uh, jump off the bridge and this you know like the narrows bridge there's always roughly the the middle of the bridge is where they jump off and just wondering you know if i sat there some night you know we go there with a the recorder and see if we can pick up anything because just think about all the the stress that somebody's going through just before they commit suicide oh, yeah God. yeah and I, if anything yeah. it, it'd be it, everything. pardon me if you're putting everything into making a decision like that, I can, I mean, is there any other moment in time that you would be, you know, uh, uh, emitting like that much energy? Like that's, that's some pretty serious yeah, And scared. Emotions. And the person would be scared. Yeah. And then on the other hand, how about when they decide to commit suicide, and they jump off the bridge, and then as soon as they release their off the bridge, they realize they didn't want to do it. So then you get all this, you know, uh, energy, you know, that could, you know, still be, you know, like a recorder going over and over and over again. You know, have you ever done anything like that? Checked any places where people have committed, you know, high suicide rate? No, no, I haven't. It'd be interesting. I mean, aside from being younger and, and, and going to random cemeteries, but after after I started doing TSPI, I kind of, everything is like these official you know, investigations. <laughs> like instead of me just going places, I, I feel like a, a public place like that, I don't know, that'd be hard to get into. But yeah, I... I I'd be neat to do a bridge and to see if I could communicate with someone who yeah. isn't there. Yeah, take a medium with you, you know, you know and, mm -hmm. and and see, you know. Because, I mean, of any place, okay, where, you know, like you take, like, the, the, the bridge in San Francisco Bridge where, you know, people are, or the Bay Bridge where they're, you know, it's like one a week, uh, you know, um, 
you know, we have a couple bridges in Seattle, like uh, the Aurora Bridge, where people jump. And, then, you know, it's like three or four a month it, it jump on it, uh, off of it. Um, you know, it just, this is an idea, you know, you might, uh, you know, pick up something from that. You know, this yeah. it, it won't be probably, you know, enjoyable what you you get. But, you know, it's this, you know, I don't know how many people have thought about it, but, you know, a lot of people, it seems like they, the first thing they think about is going to the cemetery. I, I really think that's probably the worst place you can go to really get anything is the cemetery because the, the, if the spirit remains, they're not going to be there. They're going to be where either where they were happy, I would think, uh, or they want to be with their loved ones yet. Or, you know, it just depends if they crossed over yet. I, yeah, that's a very um, intriguing, you know, uh, concept is just to try to target places that are known for for suicide i mean you always look for places that you do know that someone has uh, died in or some tragic occurrence happened in within that home so yeah i mean you do the same thing well you know like with me you know it's funny like when i when i was telling you that at the very beginning of the show where i worked at you know all the employees would tell me that you know, those weird things that were going on. And, you know, um, it was interesting is one day I actually did some research and found out, you know, how many people were actually, you know, prostitutes over a certain period of time. There was a lot that were killed and there was a lot of gunshot uh, killings in the bar around the 1880s, 1890s, 1900s. Uh, you know, and a couple of knifings. I read all this stuff, and it was a lot. So here you're you confined in this little building, right? And there was probably a good sixteen to twenty deaths, uh, you know, by murder uh, that took place in that place. So I mean, uh, I, that's why I feel that there's still people, you know, uh, spirits still there because uh, they haven't crossed over. Yeah, they they're trapped or they don't want to leave because that was a good place for them too. Yeah, I don't know about being a good place in Tacoma, <laughs> but uh, well, I, 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 I I don't know. I mean, people have fun at brothels, I guess. Yeah, I guess if you're that type of person, I'm not sure. But you know, it's <laughs> really funny. The you know, right before I end up quitting, uh, and I worked there many, many, many years. I finally asked the owner of the place, and you know. Um, I said, how come you don't go down in the basement? And he finally, finally confessed to me the reason why he didn't. He said he encountered some weird things down there that uh, the only time he would go down in the basement, there was a big safe down in the basement. Because at one point, too, besides being a hotel, you know, you're talking the building is, you know, really old. There was a bank, too, there at one point. So it had a safe upstairs and it had a huge walk-in safe downstairs. And he would put all, you know, the expensive camera stuff down in the, the, the basement uh, safe. But he would only go down there as if somebody walked down there with him. And funny, he said, I'm not, I, I won't, he goes, I won't go down there by myself. And, you know, he finally, you know, admitted to me after all those years working for him, right, that uh, he really felt the building was haunted. Like, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, and, you know. I mean, ask your employees. <laughs> You know, where were you guys back around, you know, 2000 and 19, all around the, actually where it really uh, was hitting its peak was around 1996 for me uh, with employees and stuff. I mean, you know, it's kind of weird. You have this employee who's an ex-seal and, you know, he comes up white as you can be and says, hey, I got to quit. I can't, I can't, I can't handle this anymore. And you start thinking, oh, wow, you know, um, but, I know the strongest person you you would be like. I, I mean, you'd actually think there was something down there if somebody well, but like it, that. It was I'm every be terrified. Yeah. I, I I do know, I do know people that completely were just a disbeliever a hundred percent. My best friend actually, he um, was shaving one day and he saw his uh, his great grandmother in the mirror watching him shave and he didn't know who she was and then ended up telling his grandmother the story and she was like like by the description she was 
thought maybe that it was her mother and 